So um, what uh, I'm planning to do today is a little different from what I've done in the past. Um, the the Salman tour um, show I saw was on uh, about a month and a half ago, so I decided that I was going to focus in on it. Um, since then, we moved things, uh, made the decision a bit more to focus on Black History Month. So I'm going to mix basically Solomon Tour, who is a brown-skinned uh, gay fellow from from uh, originally from Lahore, Pakistan. So there's there's certain um, issues that he deals with, which are in common with the other artists that I'm going to talk about today. But I'm going to do Salman Tour, Faith Rheingold, and, and, um, and Carrie, um, basically, uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to do uh, Carrie James Marshall. And so the three of these, these, folks have a few things in common and I'll, I'll, I'll point those out before I start, which I see a relationship between they're dealing with, you know, societal norms, um, what, what, you know, breaking those conventions in painting, but they also relate to the history of art in different ways and look at it and use that um, in, in very different manners. So um, the Salmon Tour show is on through uh, April 4th, as you can see, uh, at the Whitney. It's a small, relatively small show. I think it's about, you know, 30 or 40 paintings, which is a lot of paintings, but they're, they're modest size. They're not gigantic pieces. Um, and he's a young painter. So it's kind of uncommon for somebody to have a one person show of this kind at a major museum, which says something about, about what they thought about the work. Now, um, his, his work focuses on the relationships between, you know, these friends of his and he travels back and forth between Pakistan and the U S so, um, He's got his, his studio in Brooklyn or something like that. Um, but he's, he's really using kind of um, um, he was, he was, he was trained as an academic painter. So he's kind of using those, those techniques to um, express what he's what he's really thinking about in, in 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 his group of people, and this is a a really um, small, per short period of time. It was like uh, these paintings were all done in 2019. So um, let's see. So you can see that he's using really um, kind of this business with the noses. Uh, there's a whole there's a whole caricature thing that he's playing around with in these pieces. The the green group kind of remind me a bit of of um, some of Picasso's Harlequins. Um, okay, um, and th this little uh, piece that was written um, refers to a. A painting that we're going to get to next. So I'm going to go forward to it so you can see it before I do it. It refers to this painting, the star on, on, the, on the right. And I'm going to go back. Okay. And his painting, the star, Salman uh, Tor uses classical techniques, deployed brushwork and lighting reminiscent of the 1800s uh, to render a thoroughly modern scene. A young South Asian man sits backstage in front of a mirror wearing a furry pink jacket as a makeup artist and hairstylist fuss over him. Uh, these contrasts might seem unexpected. Um, exactly the point. 
Tour, who was born in Lahore, Pakistan, lives in New York, um, has made his career subverting styles of old paintings by centering openly on queer men of South Asia, South Asian descent, in an attempt, as he says, in, in an audio guide for the star to play with the idea of societal norms. Now, more people than ever have been paying attention. The artist recently secured his first solo show at the Whitney, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, um, and, you know, you see the kind of atmospheric thing that he's playing around with, the, the, the business of, of the bar boy. And, uh, you know, it's kind of, it, it, it reminds me a bit of, of that, the barroom scene from Star Wars. Uh, <laughs> uh, so let's see. Yeah. And this is a Boucher. Okay. And, and it, it, it's not a direct reference, but the fussing and preening and the, the whole, that whole kind of um, um, genteel, slightly perverse aspect of things when you look back at the star and them fussing and preening over him. So there, there's, there's a, you know, a slight reference to that, but then, you know, there's also a, an expressionistic quality to these pieces. There's, there's that caricature quality that, that you see in this Max Beckman, you know, kind of making fun of the society, the, the noses, the, the kind of, positions and stances that these people are taking towards each other. Um, it's, it's an interesting, you know, correlation. And then we have the blue period from Picasso. So, you know, this whole green coloration that, that, that um, Salman Tour seems to be using as a limited palette within which he's working for these paintings. Um, But then, you know, there, there are very real issues at, at play. Um, you know, being a gay man in Pakistan is, is um, you know, it's a dicey piece of business. And this is one of the places where I think there's a crossover with the, with the, uh, the Black artists that I'm going to be talking about that basically there's, an, there's a sense of oppression and there's, there's, um, there's, a, there's a sense of humor about these pieces, but, but it's very serious stuff that, 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 that's being addressed in this. Um, you know, the, the idea of being, you know, harassed by the police and, and you know, the, the shot of, of the, the policeman looking in the window, the flashlight in, in, in this, this guy's face and checking out the trunk. Um, and then the, the piece, the beating obviously is, is pretty intense. Um, so I am now gonna move on to Faith Rheingold who comes at this from a very different place. I mean, basically he, she did a whole series of civil rights heroes and sheroes and, and basically did story quilt like things uh, behind these pieces. But again, you know, She's there's a certain element of the sacred in all of this. The, they're they're kind of um, using a a format which she said that she saw in Tibetan tangas. 
Okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna move on to the next just so you can see this, but they're lovely, but they also have a real sense of humor about themselves. Okay, and and on on the on the left you can see a Tibetan Tonga, and 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 um. This is a format that she used a lot. Um, you know, she was impressed with this when when she she went to um, uh, I believe it was the Asia House or one of the one of the um, Oriental um, the Asian museums in 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 the city, and they brought down some of the tongas for her to see. And they unfurled them for her, and she was really impressed by that. Um, so she continued to use this as as a as a format, using that that the band around the outside. Um, and of course, she did a whole series of jazz pieces. Um, and this is a later, much later piece than than those pieces that we saw before. This is from 2004, um, but there's a whole series of these that she did over the years. Now, again, she uses references to mostly for her to modern artists. And this is Bornica from Picasso and her version in 1967 was this it's called Die American People series. And she's got this whole series of, of uh, different images of American society that she was seeing around her at that time. She's got a whole series of American flags that she did also. Um, you know, basically in 67, she was seeing these riots in the street. Uh, and there was a lot of social strife and the civil rights movement was full, full blown. She was very courageous. I mean, she really stuck with her guns. She did these pieces. Um, she was teaching at that time um, in, in the school system. Um, and I believe, though I'm not 100% certain, I think she was living in Harlem. And again, the relationship between modern artists, the Picasso on the right, and, and her, her, her version of that on, on, on the left, this is from 1966. So she goes back and, and, and kind of makes it her own. You know, it's not a, a, um, uh, a blonde, um, light-skinned, person reflected in this mirror. Um, so basically one of the things that many um, artists point out is that there aren't a lot of images of black people in the museums. And, um, you know, basically uh, in the sixties, Faith Rangold um, was out on the street protesting in front of places like the Whitney, places like the Metropolitan, that totally underrepresented black women, um, and still do. Um, and that is that is changing. There's an awareness there that that there is an inequity, but um, at that time. Faith Ringgold was a very outspoken feminist and, and civil rights advocate. Um, so, you know, as humorous as the piece may be, there's a truth and a core to it that she always stuck to. Um, okay. And these pieces, um, Woman Free Yourself is, is from 1971. And 
these patterns, this pattern on the left, the black light series, um, she actually visited uh, Africa in the late 60s and in the early 70s, I believe. I'm not 100% certain about my dates, but I know she did go there and was affected by the things that she saw there. There were patterns and things like that that she looked at and said, I want to use that in my work. So, you know, basically there's the mask-like aspect of these pieces, but, but also the pattern that's, that's in here is something that she got from looking at the, the, the African patterns and, and, and all of that. Okay. And these quilt pieces, I don't have a date on these. Um, I believe they are from the, the late seventies, but, but I can't, I can't vouch for that. But again, there's this kind of um, mask face identity that's that's coming out in these pieces, and she she really you know played this out. Um, now these pieces are interesting because they're they're um, they're hand painted. It's it's acrylic and then pieced together. So they're painted in these patches and then and then sewn together and quilted. Um, so you know she would use um, uh, actually she she used she hired somebody to do the quilting after after a period of time. She and her mother, I believe, did the first quilt together. Um, And okay, these these are part of the Tar Beach series. Um, on the right is uh, Tar Beach number one, which was basically you know they used to go up on the roof and and that was that was something that she remembered from her childhood. And she's got this image, you know. Basically, you see. Um, um, do a zoom in um, right in here you see the child flying over the bridge you know it's kind of an astral projection from this little girl uh, <laughs> so she was free she was flying free um, this is something that 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 comes up time and again in in um Faith Rungol's work. Um, and you see them flying through the sky here. Now, this was a way for her, these were story quilts at this point. She was writing on them as much as, as, much as anything and, and kind of autobiography. Um, she tried to publish a book and, and she couldn't find a publisher for it at the time. So she continued to tell her stories in the story quilts, which is a tradition. Uh, <laughs> okay. And um, change number two, uh, <laughs> Faith Rangold's more than 100 pound weight loss performance story quilt from 1988. <laughs> and if you look at that central image of her, that skinny little uh, 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 kind of, uh, uh, what shall I say, gymnast with a casting the, that fat shadow behind her. Uh, <laughs> she's quite a character. And um, again, on the, on the right, this is a quilt for Sonny Rollins. And basically she, she knew Sonny Rollins from when she was a child, basically she she knew him oh god she she said she met him when he was about seven years old and he was already playing the the sax and he used to come over to the house and play um and this is an image of of sunny out on i guess it was the manhattan bridge i'm not sure about that um 
a friend of mine is writing a book, has written a book about uh, about Sonny Rollins and and this period of time in the early 60s, Sonny Rollins stopped playing gigs because he wasn't satisfied with the sound that he was getting. And he used to go out onto this bridge. I think it was the Manhattan Bridge. It looks sort of like it. It's either the Manhattan Bridge. Yeah, I think it's the Manhattan Bridge. And he went out and practiced and practiced for years with nobody hearing him but the bridge. I wish I could have been there. Anyway, um, uh, and after that, he came back and, and, and did concertizing with a, with a new kind of energy and a new sound that, that was all his own. Um, not that the sound that was coming out of him before that was bad, in my opinion, anyway. Uh, okay. All right. Um, Subway Graffiti. Number two, she did a whole series of these things. You know, you, rem you remember back in the '80s, there was all that graffiti stuff all over the all over the the subways. And to some of us, it 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 looked like art. And there actually was a whole art movement that grew out of it. And she was kind of acknowledging that and and um, and celebrating it in in this particular quilt. Okay, and here she is, the lady herself. Um, you know, she's 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 85 in this picture. She's now she was born in 1930, so she's now 90 uh, and still going. Um, and then there's this uh, quilt that she did, which is called "We Came to America." It's again, it's dealing with the dealing with the dichotomy, dealing with the with the with the split, the the um, the idea of the Statue of Liberty of of this being a country that cherished freedom, and yet uh, her ancestors came here not of their own free will, um, and you know having the having the the Statue of Liberty as a black woman. Um, really kind of symbolizes the, the, the distance we've come and how far we have to go. Um, and again, the play between um, the tradition of, of, of European art and this image of of her and her family dancing at the Louvre and 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 taking in that culture, but doing it in their own way. Um, this kind of joyous idea of dancing dancing before the Mona Lisa, um, and on on the on the right is is another in the series that she did from back in the 60s and, and all the way up until the 90s into the 2000s where, where basically the flag is bleeding. You know, there's, there is a, you know, a painful recognition of, 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 of the dilemma and the distance. Okay, and we're gonna move on now to Carrie James Marshall. Portrait of the artist as a shadow of his former self. <laughs> this guy is, um, is truly a genius. Uh, I, I, I don't think I'm up to being able to articulate how powerful his work is. He's a much better spokesman for himself. And I, I have um, uh, one of his um, talks, um, a link at the end, uh, but there's, there's six or eight long YouTubes of him speaking about his work. And 
he's very articulate and you know very much about dealing with the the um Okay, so the issue is this. He, as a young black boy in LA, went into the museum and saw all this fabulous work on the walls. He saw Veronese, he saw um, uh, Michelangelo, he saw Rembrandt, all these fabulous pieces on the wall and he was awestruck by them it was it was like coming into um seeing superheroes everywhere you know uh, Ver the veronese these these great courageous characters all of them white and one of the things that he said when he went in there he said this is fabulous this is great stuff I'm going to be in this museum. <laughs> and the audacity of a seven-year-old saying something like that. I mean, um, I, I'm, I'm a little older than seven, and, and I still haven't said that to myself. Uh, <laughs> so he followed that, that dream in, into... into into art school and 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 pursued it with 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 great rigor, um, and and some of the things that he has to say are 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 hard to hear, but very very accurate descriptions of 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 how the art world functions and. Okay, so I have a quote over here. I am an invisible man. I am a man of substance, of flesh and bone, fiber and liquids. I might even be said to possess a mind. I am invisible, understand, simply because people refuse to see me. And this is from Ralph Ellison. 1952 from the Invisible Man. Um, so, Carrie James Marshall set up a task for himself, and basically, um, in in the 80s, he did a whole series and has continued to do use black, various shades of black. There are there are you know three or four different. Um, uh, names for blacks and they have very different qualities to them. There's Mars black, there's ivory black, um, and, and I'm, I'm spacing out the other one um, and it'll come back to me, but they have very different natures, warmer, cooler, um, uh, different tones. And so he set up a task for himself of working with those as, 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 a basic pattern, a basic pattern to use to, to relate to blackness. Um, okay. Remember that a picture before being a battle horse, a nude woman, or an anecdote is essentially a plain surface covered with colors assembled in a certain order. This is from Maurice Dennis. The moment I signed on to a theory of art history as constructed rather than inevitable, it became impossible for me to simply make more kinds of stuff that histories are made from for, ple for pleasure's sake alone. The vast archive of human made products loom over my present efforts as both a challenge to push on intelligently and a rebuke of too much self regard. Youthful innocence, as a consequence of ignorance, necessarily gives way to an age of obligation. 
the obligation to wonder at what is now worth doing. I've been at this for nearly 40 years full time. It is harder to make pictures today than it ever was at the beginning. What's next? Now the fun really starts. <laughs> so <clears throat> this is a quote from the gauntlet that was laid down. And here is one of his gigantic, spectacular paintings. Um, the style, uh, you know, the barber shop. It it is the the style is is a reference to um, uh, a, a a period of art that that was about abstraction. It it's um, the school out of which Mondrian came. So if you look at this background, you look at the abstraction, you look at the rectangles and squares and how those are playing around against the shapes of the forms of the figures and all of that, there's that level of this thing going on. Um, there's also reference to the Dutch and the Dutch um, uh, genre painting, you know, and basically there's, there's, there's that reference going on here. Um, along with this being a hysterical painting, I mean, the guy is really funny, but look at the scale of the thing. The thing is, the thing is 104 by 122 inches. So it is, you know, well over, you know, uh, uh, eight, nine feet, eight feet, by by 10 feet. This is a big painting. Uh, <laughs> all right, and here we are. Uh, School of Beauty, School of Culture, 2012. Again, enormous, an enormous piece. This this blending of of high and low culture of the, the idea of of um, one of the one of the tasks he set out for himself was to try and engage um, all the styles that were available of painting, from the old masters up through the abstract expressionists and pop artists and all of that, and he kind of merges those things together in in many of these pieces. It's really, they're it's hysterical. It's it's really you know just look at these look at these two little characters in the foreground, dancing around in there. I mean, he's really quite a character. Um, again, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to one of his missions is to bring the black faces into the museums, and he did that. I mean, basically. He, in 2016, he had a show at the, at the Metropolitan Museum of Art of his work. Um, he's the recipient, and I said, his, I said he was a genius. He was the recipient of a MacArthur Genius Award, which is no small feat. This guy is so articulate and so clear about where he's coming from. Um, it's, it's quite... You know the the layers that are in here, the references to um, uh, old master paintings in in these pieces. I don't even know. I haven't researched it enough to come up with to come up with the direct correlation between this painting and and where he was grabbing his references. But trust me, they're here. <laughs> okay, and here here's another one. I mean, this is a very large piece. This is eight by 11 feet. Um, it's it's uh, in this painting, you can see all these different stylistic things that he's making reference to. You know, there's this drip stuff that's down in the lower left-hand corner, you know, and and the, the uh, these 
flower-like shapes that are in this garden are kind of like, you know, splatter paint. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's graffiti-like. It's, and, and yet it's also this contemporary issue of dealing with, you know, this is one of the projects in Chicago. It's run down, it's beat up, um, quite a piece. Okay. And here we are again. Um, you know, the, the, um, the leisure, the leisure uh, time of the, of the, the black population. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, he's, he's just remarkably funny, you know, uh, basically he uses, he uses collage, he uses different, different elements of, of, of paint and references to, well, let me, let me move, let me move this on to this. Okay. And so one of the, one of the references for that piece is, is the, the leisure time of the Parisians on, on, uh, the, uh, Grand Jeu, you know, Surat and that this kind of serene, precise, uh, technique and you go back to this and you see there's this kind of precision and um, you know he's he's kind of substantiating the music he's he's giving you indications of the direction that the golf ball goes in um, you know croquet uh, you know there's the, the 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 juxtaposition of the of the water skier and the scale of things he's just playing around all the time with this he's got a real sense of humor about what he's up to but he's also at the same time making references to societal states and societal inequities On the left is a uh, satisfied man. He did this series of, of pieces that were partial monoprints, which you paint on a plate. And then, and then he, he works back into them with woodcuts. Um, and on the, on the right is a series of prints also that, that he worked on that, that are kind of, um, you know, black boy scouts. Uh, Okay, and this one is called Untitled The Studio. Um, and, and, you know, basically throughout history, you know, you go to uh, someone like Rembrandt, you know, and there's scenes of him painting in his studio. Uh, there's Matisse and, and his, his paintings in his studio with a model and all of that. Um, and, and yet, you know, basically here we are with all black. Um, and, uh, by the way, this particular piece is now in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Uh, they bought it. Um, okay. And these are some of the influences that 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 he that he uh, integrates. You know, this Ang and the precision of of Ang was something that that he mentions as as really influential. That kind of of precision. Um, but again, you know, there's Romar Bearden at the bottom, where where it's it's collage, it's 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 jazzy, it's messing around, it's it's. Um, it's the street integrated into, into the, the art process. Um, and on the upper right, 
is Aaron Douglas, who is this fabulous painter who did a lot of um, mural projects up in Harlem during the Harlem Renaissance and, and throughout the WPA. He did these beautiful, beautiful pieces with all these lovely transparencies and muted colors and, you know, dark, rooted in, rooted in the earth, basically rooted in, 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 in that black tradition, but, but very elegant paintings, just really incredible paintings. Um, and then below is, is uh, Roy de Korova, who um, did black jazz, this is Coltrane, but black jazz musicians and, and, and really great photography in black, white, and, and gray, um, subtle tones. And here's the man himself. This is this is Harry in in his studio. Uh, and if you have a chance to go and listen to anything, go and listen to one of his talks. They are provo provocative, but they are also really, really, really articulate, clear, and funny at the same time. The guy is is just. I, I can't say enough about this man. Okay. And here we are. These are the Boy Scouts, uh, <laughs> this, this whole series that he did. And these are patches that, that are kind of like, you know, so on the shoulder. Uh, I, I want to get one. <laughs> uh, so, um, on, you know, basically, here's here's a listing of 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 uh, talks from uh, Solomon Tour interview. There's there's also if you go to the Whitney um, um, website, there's there's a talk with the curators that put the show together. They they look like they're under thirty. I scratch my head <laughs> and wonder, but you know, basically. That's that's there, but this is this is an interview about another show that he is in, but it's an interview directly with him. So it's 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 an interesting one to watch. Um, and then there's Faith Rangold. There's there's actually, I would say four or five really good talks on YouTube with and by her. She was also in one of those Art Twenty One um, fiber. Um, episodes and I can't remember which one it was, but you can find it on YouTube. And then, and then, you know, Carrie James Marshall, um, there's at least six, if not eight or more talks by him, some of them an hour long. The one that I've got down here is a YouTube that, that was from the Metropolitan when he had the show in 2016. Um, anyway, uh, that's that's the story with this. Next week, we're going to do um, uh, basically um, Castile, Jordan Castile. Sorry, guys. Uh, Jordan Castile, who is a really wonderful painter. She does um, portraits and they're very... Um, intimate. She goes into people's spaces and paints them in, in those spaces, mostly located in Harlem, though she did a whole series of, of, of nudes from um, her time, her graduate um, thesis at Yale. Um, there's a vulnerability and beauty to her work that, that is really fabulous. She, her work has just there was just a show of her work on at um, the Contemporary Art Museum in New York. Uh, unfortunately, I believe it is over at this point, um, but you can still see a lot of her work there. And she was in the HBO uh, Black Artist Special that just happened. If you missed it, um, you know, if you've got if you've got HBO, go check it out on demand. 
Um, uh, Terry James Marshall is in it. Faith Ringgold is in it. And Jordan Castile, plus a few others, uh, like a friend of mine, Fred Wilson, who I went to college with, who is another one of these MacArthur Genius Award recipients. Um, the the HBO thing is 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 good, and it's got a really good interview with Jordan Castile, so it's worth watching for that. Um, anyway, I am going to repeat this program on on Saturday, the twenty seventh. It's going to be a little different because every time I do these things, they're going to be a little different. I'll flesh out some some of some of my question marks about Carrie James Marshall and go a little bit more into depth with with Faith and Gold. And uh, are there any questions at this stage of the game? Hi, Larry. Yes, there's. Um, I, I don't know if it's a comment. Right. Um, wonderful okay. presentation. Um, and then in the painting. School of Beauty and the School of Culture. Mm -hmm. I believe the yellow distorted shape in the bottom center reminds me of Holben's painting, The Ambassador. Okay, I, I like that. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's really, it's really, um, um, you know, the the little girl's, uh, um, you know, uh, comforter. But uh, <laughs> okay, I got it. Okay. But still, I, I I can see I can see that that, that there's could work. He, he looks, he looks at those things. <laughs> All right. And then somebody just asked you to repeat what the name of the HBO show, the name of. Oh, it's, um, it's, I believe it's black artists, black contemporary artists, but I, I'm not a hundred percent certain about that. If you look, it was only on a couple of weeks ago, so it will be prominent on their documentary. Um, if you go to the on demand and go to the documentary section, you'll, you'll see it. Okay. All right, then. And so I want to thank all of you for coming again. And um, I hope we see you again on all these programs. Uh, as I said, on Monday, there's the Foreign Policy Discussion Group. And on Tuesday, there's Ron Leiber talking about um, how to put your child through college economically. So uh, Larry, thank you again. And we'll see you again next Friday. Okay. All right, have a good weekend, everyone. Bye.